for the next 10 days, I will look back at a month of the season. Yesterday I looked back at August, and the opening three games. With Manchester City dropping points to Everton, and only getting a late winner against Bournemouth, things were still not quite clicking. Two sendings off didn't help either, although neither red card should have been. If August was a little bit of an anti-climax, then September was sensational. 17 goals in the league and none in reply propelled the city's ends to join top of the league. In between that great run were two Champions League group games, and a League Cup fixture. It all started with the visit of Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool side to the Etihad. The game will be remembered for the high boot from Saudi Omain on city keeper Ederson. Many pundits said that it changed the game, and that Liverpool had the beating of City before being reduced to 10 men. However, very few argued that he shouldn't have been dismissed for the high boot. Even less acknowledged City were already a goal up before the main incident. With seven shots all game, and only three on target all game, it's hard to imagine Liverpool were that much better, as claimed. More from Man City Square it was clear that Liverpool didn't know how to defend, and would only play one way. Their determination to attack saw City able to pick them off. Ten shots on target with five finding the net. A brace from both Jesus and Sane wrapped up the biggest result of the season, to that point. Four days later, it was Champions League duty, and a 4-0 defeat of Feyenoord. A very early goal from Stones had a bit of good fortune to it. By the time halftime was reached, City were 3-0 up in cruising. The games came thick and fast for City in September, and so did the goals. Three days after Europe, and a week after Liverpool, it was a sensational performance away to Watford. A hat-trick from Sergio Aguero moved him to with two goals of equaling City's all-time top scorer, Eric Brook. Almost 30 shots from the visitors to Vicarage Road, and 10 on target, six goals was the result. After a hectic opening to September, rotation was key. A number of changes were made for the next game, a Carabao Cup fixture away to the Baggies. West Brom's Johnny Evans, who had been linked to City in the summer, started for the opposition. Leroy Sane opened the scoring early on before City lost Gundogan to a tackle from behind. Jakob was the culprit, and received only a yellow card. 18 minutes equalized, Jakob the scorer. Usually that would be the signal for City to throw the tie away, but this team is different. Our lead was restored barely five minutes later, with a superb strike from Leroy Sane and City would progress. Games at home to Crystal Palace in the Premier League, and Shakhtar in the Champions League followed. Seven goals scored and none conceded saw City not drop a single point. However there was bad news in the month. After already losing Ilke Gundogan in the Carabao Cup, Benjamin Mendy fell foul of injury against Palace. Sergio Aguero was also lost to injury only hours before a vital game with Chelsea. A car crash resulted in the Argentinian having to nurse broken ribs while City took on the reigning champions. In the end he was not missed. Manchester City dominated the darker blues at Stamford Bridge, with Kevin De Bruyne scoring the only goal of the game. Enjoying 62% possession and peppering Courtois goal with shots. Before October began, Manchester City were joined top of the table with 19 points. West Brom were enjoying a nice 10th position. 
Everton were only two points above the drop and Palace were rooted to the foot of the table. As for Manchester City, Sergio Aguero was top scorer in league in all competitions. John Stones was our top scorer in Europe, and also got the record for fastest Manchester City goal in European competition.